In this video, I'm going to be using Coloured Pencil Powder Blender and Texture Fixative from Brush and Pencil to blend all of my colour pencil while drawing this mouse. So let's get to it. So this is my second time using the Colour Pencil Powder Blender and Texture Fixative and I really do like the product. Uh, it only works on sanded paper. Um, I've only got the UART sanded paper and I'm using a 500 grit. I'm not a huge fan of this paper. I um, would prefer to try the Lux Archival sanded paper, which is brush and, brush and pencils own, um, which I've heard wonderful reviews about. So in the future, I will be using that. As with all coloured pencil, you need to build up your layer first and you're best off using an oil-based pencil for this product. So I'm using my Polychromos. Um, that, I find, blends out the best of my pencils. Um, brush and pencils say you can use wax-based pencils, but I find they don't really brush out very well, or blend out even very well, so I prefer to use them for details that I want to stick and not blend out. Um, so polychromos it is, and I just layer. It goes very quickly because the sanded paper has a tooth. Um, you get a lot more detail than you thought, than you think you can with this product and with the sanded paper. I thought with the rougher paper I'd struggle with smaller details, but you really don't. And it seems like you go through your pencil a lot quicker, but because it's a sanded paper, it's putting more pigment onto the paper. So. Um, rather than all the layers that I'd have to use when doing it on a hot press watercolour paper, for example. Um, the sanded paper is taking more of that pigment initially off my pencils. So I'm starting by blocking in my lights and darks. I'm going in the same direction as the fur, so pay attention to your reference photo. Going in the same direction as the fur and just building up my base layers as I normally would. And as I say, I'm being a bit messy than I normally would be with the sanded paper because I do find that the powder blender and the sanded paper are an awful lot more forgiving than a hot press watercolour paper are. Um, I find my pencils don't have to be quite as um, sharp as they would be because they have to be weapon sharp on um, watercolour paper. But on this they don't need to be quite as sharp. You can wear them down a bit longer than you normally would. I did get a bit lazy on this one though and they were a bit too blunt in places um, which I worked out pretty quickly and started sharpening them again. So I'm using blues underneath my um, where my whites go because that will give me an undertone um, so it's easier for me to add texture over my white areas. And where the browns are I'm using terracottas and umbers and burnt umbers and... Um, Burnt ochres, sorry, burnt ochres um, that I'll lay darker browns over a bit later on. But as I would with colour pencil, I am just building up on the layers. So build up on my layers, um, and once I'm happy with the amount of pigment I've got on the paper, then I will start blending with the powder blender. Now, to use a powder blender, I use soft tools, that's S O F F T. They're meant for pan pastels, but they work really, really well for this. Um, so that's what I'll be using when it comes time to apply the powder blender. Um, I find the pen powder blender really good. It's got a um, like little sieve type thing, not quite a sieve, I don't know what you call it, but at the top so you can literally control how much powder comes out of the little pot it's in. And then you just dab. You see it looks like a makeup, of, um, makeup applicator, eyeshadow applicator there. I've literally just dabbed it in to the powder blender and I'm going over the top and just blending out as I normally would um, and then I'm working over the top. Now there is a product that goes with the powder blender called Texture Fixative that I did mention. Um, I haven't used it on this occasion or this time, this instance of um, blending but I will do after the next blend. Um, in between layers of using your powder blender um, it is important to use a texture fixative, otherwise, because of powder blend, how the powder blender works, you will keep on shifting any further layers. Um, you'll lift them off, or you run the chance of lifting them off, um, which you don't want to do. So when you've got 
enough layers and you've blended out, um, use the texture fixative, um, spray it evenly over the surface and wait for that to dry completely. That will lock your layer in and it will add extra texture and extra tooth for your next layers. So with Powder Blender, what I do like is you can layer and layer and layer and layer the sand sanded paper and the textured fixative work together in such a brilliant way that um, you can just keep on going. Now that layer I did there where I blended, before I started adding these details here, I had added that texture fixative, waited for it to dry completely, and now I'm going over with my finer details. So now I've got my dark baser layers, I can add lights over it. You can't really do this on hot pressed watercolour paper. Um, hot pressed watercolour paper, you really need to pay a lot of attention to where your lights and your darks are because you can't necessarily add that light over the darks unless you're using a product like the um, brush and pencil again, the titanium white and top chuck texture. If you're using that, then you can. But normally it's a lot harder to add your highlights over darks um, when you're working in colour pencil on that hot pressed watercolour paper. So it's another plus for the sanded paper and the powder blender, in my opinion, is that I can put the darks down and then add highlights over the top and more details over the top as I want to. Also with this, you can, to a degree, go completely over an area that you don't like and pretty much get rid of it and completely reshape it. And you can't do that again on hot pressed watercolour paper. That's not to say that I'm never going to use hot pressed watercolour paper again. I am. I love my OMS. And I like blending that way and I like the way that I work on watercolour paper. But I am really loving this product, this product, and I really think that I will be using it a lot more. And I'm really excited to try their own um, sanded paper, which I've heard wonderful things about from all sorts of artists who either work in colour pencils and pastels and you name it, they've said it is wonderful. So it's a bit pricey for me at the moment, but I, I hear that it's really worth the cost. So that is something that I am going to try in the future. And just so you know, I am not affiliated or paid for any comments or anything by this company. I just really, really like this product and wanted to show you guys how it works. So again, just carrying on layering because you can with this sanded paper and the touch up text, not touch up texture, that's the wrong one, and the um, powder blender. I'm just adding in my final details here. As you can see, this has gone so quickly. I finished this whole point portrait in about an hour and a half last night and that was late last night. I think I finished about half two, three o'clock in the morning because I hadn't had a YouTube video. So it goes so quickly. It is really good product for speeding you along and, and getting the detail that you want and getting finished a lot quicker. This would have taken me an awful lot longer with OMS and hot pressed watercolour paper. That is for sure. As you can see, I'm adding smaller details. The sanded paper isn't stopping that. My not sharp pencil was, but the actual paper itself wasn't. I can add the fur strokes. I can add the whiskers. And it, it really isn't affected by the sanded paper, which I was surprised about because I didn't think I could get the detail in on something quite so rough. So I'm just adding the shadow underneath him now so he's not just floating in the middle of the page and again blending that out with the powder blender. So using a few different colours there because I didn't want it to be dull and boring and adding a few more final details and then he is pretty much done. Final whiskers and that's him. I'm now deciding where I'm going to put my signature before I finally finish it off. And here is the final mouse. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video useful, please leave me a thumbs up. I post new content every Thursday. If you don't want to miss anything, please press the subscribe button below. You can also press that bell icon. It makes sure that you get notified by YouTube for all new content I post. That's it from me now. Bye, guys.